This is Chris from Essential SQL. First, I want to thank you all for asking all the great questions. I've gotten some great emails from you and truly appreciate them. I'm really excited to see that you've liked the first two videos. I'm glad to see how excited everyone was to learn how to detect duplicate values. I was really happy to find out you found it valuable. I truly want to help you get over one of the biggest hurdles in learning SQL, that being learning how to combine data from multiple tables. With my years of experience, I can help you see SQL from a DBA, an analyst, or a developer's perspective. I've done all those jobs. I really love databases. Learning how to do joined set operators such as unions and subqueries may seem intimidating, but I think once you watch my videos, you'll see they're easier, easy to master. In fact, to get the ball rolling, I really want to show you some possibilities. I put together a case study based on past students' questions, which I think really put many of these pieces together. We'll get started soon, but I really want you to remember this is really an overview. I don't expect you to memorize or be able to answer any detailed questions about the statements I'm going to show you. I wouldn't expect you to create these queries today. Instead, I want you just to kind of sit back and watch this and see that what I'm building is really just a part of three simple solutions. I think when you look at the final solution, you're going to go, wow, that's kind of complicated. But then as I go through it, you're going to go, oh yeah, simple little pieces. Those simple little pieces are what I'm going to teach you. And you will, after that, know how to put them together to get the final result. Okay, for this case study, I want to show you how we can take three different ways of combining data from different tables to create a result and use those to solve a problem. So the problem we have in our case here is that we have a table called event. It has event ID, duration, status code, and reason code. And what we want to do is we want to display the event ID duration and then the name, so status name and then the ready name. What makes this an interesting problem is that for each status, there's a corresponding ready table. Somehow someone designed the database a little weird, but that's how it is. So depending on the status, we then need to take the reason code and go find it in one of four different tables. That makes the matching a little tricky. And to be honest, sometimes um, people design databases in a weird way and you just have to cope with it. It's just the way it is. Maybe it's a system that you bought. So you have no choice but to use it how it is. So the final result is we want to take the event and then get a query result that will look like event ID duration and the status name. So the big question is what do we do to write a query? Now I don't, I'm not going to show you exactly how to write the query and I wouldn't expect you to then go out and, and use these three techniques I'm going to show you today to write the query, but I want to show you what's possible because by the end of this video series you will be able to take a problem like this using the three techniques that I'm going to introduce to you today. Use them to do this solution. So let's get started. So the three ways that we're going to learn today to combine data and I'm going to introduce you to are joins, unions, and subqueries. So a join is used to combine columns from separate tables and to do so you use um, fields to match, it's called a join condition. You use that to match rows from the various tables and then you can pull the columns in from those rows. Union is used to take rows from different tables and then add them to a single result. So uh, if I had two tables that I needed to union together, one had four rows and the other one has five, my result would have nine rows. A subquery is a fancy way of saying that I have a query and inside that query is another query. What we're going to do today is use a union and then we're going to wrap that inside a subquery, which then will have an outer query that's using a join. That's kind of the, the piece, and I'll show you how that all works. So let's get started. So the first um, problem we need to solve is how to get the status name in our result. Because remember, we want to say uh, event, duration, status name. To do that, we can use an inner join. So inner joins will match um, one or more columns from different tables. 
In this case, we're going to use the status code to match from event to status, and it'll return combinations of rows where those codes match. So in our case, we're going to see, for instance, status code R is going to match to the status R in the status table, and at that point, we'll be able to get the name ready. Now, the syntax to do this might be something you've seen in the um, past is select event ID duration and then you'll see an alias s.name this is the alias for the status table we're going to um, pull information from event which I've aliased as E and then the inner join says pull back all rows that match we're using status aliasing it as s and we're going to pull back the rows that match where the status code from event e dot status code equals the status code from status which is s dot status code the second issue we need to solve is how are we going to get those ready reasons those names into our final result again the the matching challenge we have is that we need to first match the status code to the status table to then understand which of the reason tables we can go out and find the reason code. If you look at our, our data here, you can see that some of these reason codes are repeated for different status codes. Well, you just can't take the reason code and go out and match to a table because I might come back with more than one match. To do this, we're going to use a union. What I realized is, is that if I could get a combination of status code, reason code, and name in a result, then I could use that to match against to get my reason names. In order to get those um, columns all in one result, we can use the union. What it does, it'll take all the rows from ready reason, delay reason, spare reason, and down reason, and combine them into one result of rows. And here you can see that I have the status code, the reason code, and the name. Now you be wondering, where does the status code come from? Because it's not part of any of these tables. The only thing we see here is reason code and name. What I did is I created what's called a static field. I, I basically, you'll see in the syntax here, literally put in values like literally R, D1, S, and D2. So the union is going to allow us to combine, combine the rows from multiple tables. And to keep it the, the reason codes unique, I added that status code to give me now something to match against. So now I'll match against status code and a reason code to get the name. Here's the union command that I can use to pull back the information, to replicate the data that I'm showing here in the center. And here you'll see that static field. So I have R, D1, S, and D2. One of the keys to when using a union is, is that the columns need to, to match in type and quantity. So here you're, you're going to see that I got um, the types are string, I got the reason code, and the names all lined up. So I'm, I'm uniting the same type of structure together. So I'm really I'm just taking select R reason code name from ready reason. I should know what that, that'll just pull back every row. Basically combine that then with every row from delay reason, combine that with every row from spare reason, and combine that with every row from down reason to get the union. All right, so that's the second problem solved. Third problem to solve is matching these. I kind of talked about how we can use the status code and reason code from the event to match to the result of the union, but how am I going to get a hold of that result to match? Because if I just run a query, it just comes back with a result and that's it. It's done. So what am I going to do to kind of capture that result and then be able to use it? To do that, we can use what's called a subquery. What we're going to do is we're going to take the union and we're going to actually place it inside another query. And then that'll allow us to query the event and then the results of that union. What this looks like in its entirety is that we'll be selecting the event ID and duration. And then in this case, I, I'm going to go for the reason name. And you see it says SR reason name. Why I chose SR is, is because that is the status reason. I alias the table. So here you can see my union. So I have the R, and I'm aliasing the first column, the static column, as a reason name so I can reference it down the road. I have the reason code, we have the name, and we're uniting in that with delay reason, as we had talked about. So this is going to bring back every reason, name, and code. And then 
by interjoining the result of this, this is the subquery, the thing that's in the parentheses, which I named SR, by joining the status code from event and the reason code from event and matching those to the status code and reason code from my subquery, I'm able to pull in those reason names. So this really is showing um, the th second and third solution to the problem. What I now need to do is kind of pull it all together into the one final result. And this is the final result. So the final query here is selecting the event ID, the duration, the status name from the status, and the reason name from the um, derived table or subquery that we alias as SR. So the pieces here are the inner join to get the status. That was the first solution. The second solution was this union to kind of pull together all those reasons from the various tables together. And then the third solution is to utilize the results of that union in a subquery. That's really this part in parentheses that we now are saying, by the way, after you run the subquery, you're going to call it a drive table and we're going to call it SR, alias. And then we're just going to enter join on that to get the status code and the reason code. And that will give us our result. Now again, I wouldn't expect you to go out and write this right now. What I wanted to show you though is the possibilities because this is something that you will be able to do after watching all the videos. It's just three basic ways to combine data and putting them together in a recipe to come out with the result. It's like baking a cake. I hope you found that case study really helpful. Did you see that though the end result looked like a mouthful, it was really made up of three simpler concepts? Many of my students raise questions about this process, and that is how to write complex queries such as these. For instance, they're not sure where to start. And this is where I can help. I've got some really great ideas to help you get going with confidence so you can start writing queries your first day. Others wonder where how to put it all together, and as you can see from the case study, there is a progression. I like to take things step by step. When solving complicated problems, I like to build on success. Did you see how I started with a simple solution, add a step and continue to continue to build on that progress and, and success? Sometimes my students get confused with all the terminology and don't know what commands to write. And this is where I can help too. I'll show you not only um, what all the commands are to use, but when you should use them. That way you'll know whether to use an inner join or an outer join. You might be completely mystified by subqueries. Don't be. That is what um, we're going to learn. We're going to learn about subqueries, joins, um, unions, set operators. I'm going to show you how subqueries are just one of the many ways that we can combine data, and there's no mystery to them at all. So before starting my video series, students would tell me that data relations seem confusing. They wonder, how can I ever expect to combine data if I don't understand how data is related? Well, I have a special segment I've put together just about tables, why they're structured the way they are, and how they're related to one another. And I also have many hints that you can use to figure out how to build those relations between tables. You're going to be empowered by these videos. You're no longer going to be held at someone else's mercy to get the data you need be it through canned reports or a developer or your IT department. I'm going to show you the right statements that you can write yourself using SQL to combine the data that you need. And all this SQL is not going to seem mystifying anymore. Not only will we be able to read it, read the statements, but clearly understand how the data is being combined. You'll understand the mechanics of the SQL. Trust me, this is pretty awesome when you can write your own queries. I've had many people sit down with me and I'll start writing queries to extract their data and they're blown away. They didn't think you could do that. They only figured like product developers can write queries to pull data from database. They don't understand that this is something that you know us users can do. And let me tell it, this isn't so. You're going to be able to write this information too. You're going to be able to write queries that combine data pull what you want out of a database. So in my next video, I'm going to offer you a great opportunity to continue to learn to finally understand how to combine data using join subqueries and set operators. And if you really want to take your 
skill to the next level. This is a must-see item. So be on the lookout for my next email. You won't want to miss this limited opportunity.